So, now just as we, we sang just now, that your word, but we want it to be like a fire in our bones, Lord. Even as we just, as Pervin reminded us, when he spoke to those two disciples on the road, uh, their hearts were burning within them as you spoke. So even as we go briefly through these two psalms, Lord, uh, I pray, we pray for your word to burn within us, burn something new in our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we'll... So what I'd like to do, I think I'll call this Psalms of Praise and Thanksgiving. We often think of praise as that far songs, so something exuberant, lively, you know. And then of course Thanksgiving is maybe a little more solemn. Then of course worship is even more intimate. These are all just arbitrary terms that we've put together. But I think that if you look at Psalm 29 and Psalm 30, we will have Psalms of Praise and Thanksgiving. Okay, and we'll just go through the psalm. There's, I won't try to go into too much detail, but I think that uh, we will learn something about expressing ourselves in worship. So Psalm 29 is the psalm of David. It says, Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So just off the top of your heads, when you hear the psalm, what do you think of? What is the first, what is the impression? What is going Power, on? exalting, exalting God. Oh, sorry, I was saying. What do you think? God. Is... Pa, God is a whirlwind. What do you think is happening? When I, when I, when I realized what the psalm was about, I thought of just a couple of weeks ago, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, where we had that storm in Bombay. Mm. And after that storm, so many trees had fallen and, you know, mm -hmm. we had, I mean, we saw this picture that all saints of trees uprooted, huge, huge trees uprooted and you can see the huge roots and all of that. And we look at all of that and we think, oh, what destruction, oh, what a powerful storm. And David says, what a powerful God. You see, what seems to have happened here is there's been a mighty storm. And he's looked at the storm and he hasn't thought of the destruction and the this and the that. To him, it tells him something about God. You know, And that's what struck me that we look at events around us and they can be revelations of God. And those are the words that you'll use, no power and things like that. And yet somehow we uh, focus on nature. Oh, look what happened. The storm, the rain, the monsoon, the this, the that. Or we'll focus on the BMC. Oh, look what they didn't do, this and that. And David is focused on what is telling him about God. And so, so it appears that there's been this mighty storm. And we'll look at the storm in a little bit, not in too much detail. But it causes David to praise God. You know, And in a sense, David, of course, is... A consummate songwriter, like all the best songwriters, he's writing from his own experience. Yeah. He has an experience, he has a revelation, he has something emotional happens within him. And how does he express it? 
he, exp he expresses it in a song in a poem most likely these were songs he expresses them in a song or a poem and uh, that's that's what most creative people do i mean like say taylor swift whenever she breaks up with somebody she writes a song about it and makes a lot of uh, millions of dollars out of it okay that's the creative process so so the so the so the storm has happened maybe it's still happening it's just finished and david has got a revelation he's looked at it and got a revelation of god and this is what he says he says ascribe to the lord of mighty ones which is actually referring to the angels ascribe to the lord glory and strength ascribe to the lord the glory due his name worship the lord in the splendor of his holiness so he has this picture of god in heaven in the splendor of his holiness okay again we don't know what how great a revelation david have a, had of heaven itself i don't think it was as deep as for example when isaiah actually saw the throne room in isaiah chapter 6 but he had clearly has a revelation of how awesome that the throne of god is and he's telling the he's he's seeing this god's glory manifest in the storm and he's telling the angels praise him ascribe to him glory and strength the glory due his name because even in the storm i mean in the storm he sees the manifestation of how awesome god is and then he goes into the storm itself and of course one of the things that happens in a storm is the noise okay of course the noise of thunder but the noise of the wind the noise of the the rain and we don't know what else is happening over there as we we will see the Um, the noise of uh, trees falling and crashing and all of that and we see that here and he uses it i mean for him it's that voice the voice of god which of course he is harkening all the way back to genesis because god said and god spoke and everything came into existence he is he is harkening back to the power and the voice of god and saying god god is speaking god just says something and all this is happening and so we have all those we have these uh, pictures presumably there's a uh, when it's uh, rains so heavily there's a flood which would have been common there because the jordan flooded okay so the voice of the lord is over the waters the god of glory thunders the lord thunders over the mighty waters he uses the word so many what is it telling him he's saying the voice of the lord is powerful majestic and then things are happening Okay. he says he talks of cedars breaking in pieces in verse 5 in verse 6 was there a mini earthquake or is it just that there was such a storm that it felt like the earth was shaking because lebanon has mountains sirion is a mountain itself it's mount hermon so he's speaking of the mountain skipping like a like a calf and yaki like a young wild ox so it's almost like the earth is shaking that's the extent of the storm the extent of the power and i can imagine i mean at the moment when two three uh, trees huge trees fell in all saints the earth must have shook for that time at least you know so we don't know what is happening he goes on to he talks of lightning he talks of the desert whether it's the mountains or the deserts being shaken and then in verse 9 we have the extent of the damage the twisting the oaks and stripping the forests where you can think of leaves and bark and and trees and tree trunks going flying such a picture of the awesome power of the storm and god and and uh, david sees that and he says in his temple all cry glory so you have these voices speaking and the commentator wonders whether because there are seven voices whether he is referring to the six days of creation which had seven creative acts the seventh one of course being there were two two creative acts on day 6 the animals and then man see so wonder whether he st- he is referring to that irrespective you have the voice of god doing all these amazing things and then in response a voice comes out of his temple out of his sanctuary remember there is no temple at this time is he referring to the tabernacle he is most likely referring to heaven again out of his dwelling place all cry 
glory. You know, and I, it just struck me that really we are, that we, our perspective has become so earthly that when we see things happening, for David, the automatic response should be all cry glory. What an awesome God. Okay, today, what do we say? Climate change. And then we start mourning about this and that. But David sees it and he says, all cry glory. What an awesome God. Okay. And in verse 10, then he thinks of the, the God is so awesome. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood, which is referring to creation when there was a flood at creation. And the Lord is enthroned as king forever. So from the beginning to forever, the Lord is enthroned. Why is that important? Because in times of storms and all of that, we get shaken. We get scared, we get shaken, we get disturbed. And he says, you don't need to in any storm. The virus is a storm. The pandemic is a storm. Because God sits enthroned over the flood. From the beginning to forever. God is enthroned. God is in control. And we are seeing all this devastation. But the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And that is our confidence. That is our assurance. That is David's confidence and assurance. That all of this that he sees in nature. Just as a revelation. Not just of the power and might of God. The sovereignty of God, but also the blessing that comes from God. He says, yes, all of that is happening, but remember that God is sovereign. God is in control. He gives strength to us. He blesses us with peace. And so we could call this a psalm of praise. And then we can go straight into Psalm 30, which is a psalm of thanksgiving. So it says in Psalm 30, a psalm, a song. So before I go on, next time there's a storm, next time there's something. I don't know, some of some creative people, even now we've got this pandemic going on. Where are the songs about how awesome God is? They're not there, no? We've been doing a lot of mourning. Let's go to Psalm 30. A psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple and of David. This is really a, a strange uh, heading for the dedication of the temple because you would have thought a psalm like Psalm 20, was it? What is Psalm 24? That processional psalm. You would have thought that they'd have, he'd have written it over there in the title but he doesn't over there and we have to figure out what is happening. And there's nothing processional or festive about this particular psalm. So we'll, I'll try to explain a bit later why I think uh, David said the psalm is for the dedication of the temple. First you recognize therefore that the temple was going to be made much, much, much later. In fact, after his death. But David felt that this psalm is something that could be sung at that time, whenever the temple was dedicated. We we'll just go through the psalm and you will immediately see the context. When I when I asked you about Psalm 29, nobody said storm because we were only thinking in lofty terms. Now we will read Psalm 30 and you will be able to tell me immediately what the context is. Okay. Again, it's something personal that David goes through and he expresses it in worship. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O oh Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O oh Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O oh Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction, in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Yes, 
what is the context a specific context or just that he's in like it's like personal storm it's like he's in the he's really sick and he's like he's gonna die he's sick and god healed him again look at the pandemic look at uh, people getting sick imagine something somebody getting sick and thinking they're going to die of this virus and then they get better this is a, a psalm that they can write a psalm that they can we can read and 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 uh, mean okay so what seems to have happened that's why i'm saying it's strange that is used for the dedication of the temple but i'll tell you why i think that is so but it appears that david got very sick at some point in his life and he felt like has happened to me many times that he was about to die and god healed him okay so he says i will exalt you starts with he starts with praise so the i mean there are three pastors there's were five verses 1 to 5 and then there's 6 to 10 which is really very important and then again going back to praise with 11 and 12 okay so he starts with this with this uh, exalting god praising him because he has been healed he said i will exalt you o lord for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me so probably he was sick and he was dying and his enemies thought okay now we will uh, and his enemies don't have to be in, inside also you know all the philistines everybody were upset with him because he kept on defeating everybody okay o lord my god i called to you for help so he prayed of course and you healed me Oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. So he obviously felt he was very sick, and he was going down into the grave. That word is Sheol. You spared me from going into the pit. And so that is the personal, specific incident from which David, uh, out of which comes this expression of worship. Okay, and again, it's similar to. and we and we been seeing testimony after testimony you know there have been people who been sending these especially in the early days where people got sick and then they we would get these whatsapp messages about praising god because he healed them noella's father for example was one of those who sent that message and he was so grateful and uh, yeah that's exactly what david is doing but because he's such a creative guy he does it in a song okay and then he he exhorts the saints he exhorts the people of god to join him in praising god which is again something that we do you know we give a testimony and then we want everyone together we want to together celebrate what god has done sing to the lord you saints of his praise his holy name for his anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime weeping may remain for a night but rejoicing comes in the morning so he thinks of that fact that and we'll come to that now that he sees also that the sickness may have been an act of judgment something that happened to him for a certain reason but he says even if that happened and remember it was a very serious sickness that he felt he was going into the grave it was he was so sick but even all of that for him was just a moment he recognizes that even if that was there for just a moment but god's favor is for a lifetime you know whenever we we the bible always contrasts this thing you know that god's anger or god's judgment or punishment is limited compared to the infinite nature of his blessing even if you look at the in exodus 34 you know i he says that, that i i will what remember the sins or visit the sins to the third and fourth generation but will bless to a thousand generations there's always such a difference between the very transient nature of judgment and punishment and the eternal nature of blessing between god and his people so he says weeping may remain for a night rejoicing comes in the morning these are his phrases that are so familiar to us okay but look at the key the, the key thing is from 6 to 10 it's astonishing when i felt secure i said i will never be shaken oh lord when you favored me you made my mountain stand firm but when you hid your face i was dismayed okay and so when things were going well david forgot about god when i felt secure i will never be shaken 
and it needed the sickness for him to turn back to God in a sense. You see, Lord, you favored me, my mountain stood firm, things were great. When you hid your face, I was dismayed. He sees that sickness as the time of God hiding his face because he needed to learn something. He was in a place of, you know, I'm doing really well. And so God can allow this to happen. He can allow misfortune to come because he wants to bring you back to him. Because things have gotten so good, so comfortable that we've lost sight of God and the fact that it's his hand upon our lives that is the reason why we're in that place. And, you know, I can think of no better example than my father who I've shared that in the past also. The only reason that he finally was able to surrender to Jesus and come to him was because he had a stroke and became invalid and in that state I think for the first time in at least my lifetime I, I, I could see him really at peace and really had just surrendered his pride, his uh, just surrendered it all to Jesus. You know, the sad thing was it happened therefore at a time when he couldn't do anything with it. He couldn't do anything for the Lord with all the talents and all the gifts that he had. But I think for Jesus it was, I've got him. You know, they're lying in that bed, having, having, having to be taken care of all the time. But as far as Jesus was, he said, I've got him. But it took that debilitating state of affairs for my father to turn to Jesus. Okay? And David is there, he's fine, he's got sick and he realizes that there was pride and there was arrogance and there was a, a, a false sense of security and then he says, to you O Lord I called, I cried for mercy. And even when he's crying for mercy, what is he asking for? When he's saying, God heal me that I may praise you. You see? He recognizes that when he was felt so secure, I will never be shaken. The praise had shifted from God to him. And now it has to go back to God. What gain is there in my destruction? In my, I will not be able to praise you, Lord. He said, be merciful to me, be my help so that I may continue to praise you and exalt you. And of course, the moment he is better, he writes a song of praise and thanksgiving. Okay? So, I think that's the sense of David's heart. Know that even when David went off, he would come back so... The moment he realized it, okay, that conviction, even the Bachiya incident, when there's conviction, there's instant return to God. And that was that was also reason why he was a man after God's own heart. It was not that he wasn't infallible he was infallible or he he couldn't fall. He did fall. We know that he fell then. It appears that he fell in this time. And the sickness happened in and whether God did it or not, but the sickness brought him back to God, but he's able to respond, he's able to respond to conviction and return back to God so quickly. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me, be my help. And of course, God has healed him, we know. And then there's, he ends with praise again. You turn my wailing, and the, or the more familiar word for us is mourning, into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. So that picture, it's a it's it's parallelism there. There's mourning with sackcloth and dancing with joy. I like the fact that he says you clothe me with joy, not clothe me with a nice garment. He compares sackcloth with joy. Whatever he's wearing, he feels on top of that is this garment of joy that God has put over him. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. And so with these two psalms, we have these two events. We have an event in nature, a mighty storm. And it tells David how awesome God is. And then we have an event which is so personal to him. A sickness that almost leads to death. But it tells David something about himself. And having to return to God. Why would David put this particular psalm, Psalm 30, as a dedication for the, of the temple. I believe because it's a reminder to remain humble before God. Not to allow verse 6 to happen. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. You know? Because uh, the temple was, was to be the place where people would come in humility, to be the place where they would be constantly reminded 
of their need for God, but also more than that, of God's providence, of God's blessing, of God's favor upon their lives, which is why they were able to live. And too often, it takes a crisis, it takes something going wrong for us to recognize that we need God. Not only we need God, we were in a good place because of Him in the first place. And we are brought back to Him. And so the the storm causes David not to wonder at the destruction and be afraid, but praise God for how awesome He is in power and glory. And the sickness causes David to return back to God in humility, in joy, in thanksgiving. And in a sense, uh, the storm reveals the transcendent nature of God while the sickness takes David back into a place of intimacy. And Lord, I pray for each one of us, Lord. Uh, most of us are not so creative, but I just pray in different ways that we may be able to respond, Lord, to personal events of our lives, the things that happen around us, maybe even world events, uh, things that affect us emotionally, Lord that we may be able to have your perspective and be able to respond to you in praise and thanksgiving and worship. Just let all that happens around us, all that happens to us, within us, Lord, only uh, reveal you more clearly to us and cause us to draw closer to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>